बाय That second Pentecost at Cornelius' house was to bring the Gentiles. Gentiles were any people who were not Jews. And they made up one body. Therefore, in God's sight, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, so far as the church was concerned, but one body.
word of God. Covenant because of the teachings from Bishop and Pastor Cheryl Hines. It has been a basically uh, a giving word in our home. And this is helping us out tremendously in our marriage. Thank you. Hi, we're the Jacksons. We love New Covenant Christian Church because it has taught us to walk by faith and not by sight. And the word from our bishop and co pastor is excellent. The word that they also live by. And also, when we first got here, it was very welcoming and warm. Great people here. Thank you. Uh, we've been attending the church for about 23 years. We got married here. Uh, we love their preaching and the teaching here. Seven, we enjoy the fellowship. We enjoy the humbleness. We enjoy the worship. They have great leaders. We really love them. I've been coming to this church for the last 27 years. I love the church because they teach and preach the word. Thank you.
to neighbors. Yeah. You want to sing ten on us? You don't have, you don't have to come up now, but yeah, when we go, yeah, sing ten of us, yeah. Lord, that's our tell. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord. Oh yeah, the, sing it up here though, can I, Don't sing it down there. Yeah, yeah, sing it up up here. He just got a strong voice, but sing it up there when we when we go up. Just come up for that song. Uh. Lord, I will. Covenant. Do you feel the presence of the Lord today? Amen. Oh, we thank you, Father, for the presence of the Lord being in the house today. Let's just stand on our feet and give him a, a hand praise and make him welcome this morning. Amen. We thank you, Father, for your presence. Hallelujah. Are you glad to see him this morning? Are you glad you can feel the presence of the Lord in the house today? Are you glad he's alive in you today? Are you glad you're able to move today? Are you glad, of youth, are you glad you're able to think this morning? Hallelujah. Why don't you just look at somebody and tell them, welcome. Welcome. Hallelujah. And we're going to make the Lord welcome this morning. Make him welcome today. Glory to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Anointing, fall on me, fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Yes, Lord. Anointing, fall on me. Come on, let's mean it. Let's sing it like we mean. Let's lift up our spirits this morning. Resurrection power fall on us today. Lord, create in us a clean heart today. A clean mind. Lord, rise up in us. Let the rivers of living water begin to flow in and out of us today. more time. Let's just close our eyes and enter in. Anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Let the power, let the power of the whole Oh, anointing. 
one more time. I feel him coming in. Anointing. Lord, come in and have your way. Fall on me. Anointing. Anointing. I need you to fall on me. Fall on me. Lord, it's your power. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Lord, fall, fall on me. On me. Oh, anointing. anointing. Thank you, Lord. Fall on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel my help in the sanctuary this morning. And I'm morning scriptures coming from the book of Hebrews. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, beginning at verse 19 through 23. Hebrews 10, 19 through 23. And it reads, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us, I said, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised for he who promised for he who promised for the one who promised it says he is what faithful hallelujah he who promised you is faithful all of his promises are yes and amen he who promised is faithful let us go to the lord in prayer this morning Father God, we enter into your, your presence this morning. We come before your throne of grace, Father. And we come and stand before you with boldness, Father God. Thank you, Father God, that you provided a way for us to be able to stand in the very presence of the living God. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have to go before another man or another person or another entity before we can reach you. But because of the blood of Jesus, we have access to you instantly. We can cry out, Abba, Father. We can confess our sins. We can come before you, Father God, with our requests and lay them at your feet, Father God, right where you are. We thank you, Father, that because Jesus is on the, your right hand, he's ever making intercessions for us, Father God. All we have to do is whisper a prayer, whisper a word, and you catch it right there, Father. It doesn't have to go to anybody else. It doesn't have to be the disciple through anybody else, but we have direct access to you. We have a new way. We have a new hope, and we thank you this morning. Thank you for your presence in the house today, Father. We say, Father God, that we have gathered today in your name, Father God, and that we're going to forget about ourselves. We're going to forget about our cares. We're going to forget about our worries. We're going to forget about our wants. We're going to forget about our complaints. We're going to forget about self, and we're going to magnify you today, Father yes. God. We're going to draw in our minds, our wondering thoughts. We're going to focus on you today, Father, and we're going to magnify you. We say, Father, we want you to be glorified today and none other. Father, we want you to be lifted up today and none other. We want you to be honored today and none other. We want you to be praised today and none other. We want you to be worshipped today and none other. We want you to be exalted today and none other. We exalt you and put you on the place of the throne room. We dethrone self and we enthrone Christ today. Father God, thank you for coming into the house today. And we magnify your word today. We magnify your name, Father God. You even said your name is even above your word, Father. And we magnify the name of Yahweh today. The name of Jehovah today. The name of Emmanuel today, Father God, for you are with us. Thank you for the word that will come forth from Bishop today. Thank you that it will be a, a revelatory word that would break up foul ground in us today. Father, we thank you, Lord, today. We will praise you. We will praise you today. We will worship you today. We will bless your name today. We will release the glory.
glory today that's due to you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on, stop looking around. Let's worship. Anointing, Lord, fall. Anointing, Holy Ghost, power fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall. Let the power of Lord, fall on me. Oh, I'm gonna let the power run. Let the power run. The Holy Ghost. Let it fall. Let the power run. Let the power run. The Holy Ghost. Fall on me. Let the power run. Let the power run. Let the power of, let the power of, yes, Lord, I'm going to let it fall. Holy Spirit, fall. Let the power of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Anointing, anointing fall on me. Yes, anointing fall on me. Come on, make it personal. Not my sister, not my brother, but me, Lord. Anointing fall. I need you to fall. Set me on hallelujah fire today, Lord. Anointing, anointing, fall on me. sing a song. That's it. When the music stops. Yes. Yeah. yeah. See, when it's true praise and worship, yeah. even when the music stops, the worship goes on. Amen. The praise continues. Yes. It's not in the music, but it's in the praises. Yes. It's in the singers. Yes. We're having a little difficulty up here with the organ, but that's okay. Yes. You still continue to praise. Hallelujah, Lord. And we're going to continue, Lord, to lift you up, Lord. We're going to lift your name high in all the earth, Lord. We want to just honor you this morning, Lord, and send our praises up. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord.
think well of you and all of your greatness with my whole heart I'm gonna lift your name up high in all the earth, earth. may this song of praise and adoration bless the O Lord in exhortation as all the nations lift your name up high in all the
put it all together. I just want to call him. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. That's what we call you. You were born in a manger. Manger born, put on a tree. You died to save you now. That's he. Jesus. That's what we call you. We call you were born you. in a manger. Manger born, put on a tree. You died to save. Oh, help me, church. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call That's you. What we call you. were manger born. Manger born.
desire just sing that to him this morning to worship you to worship you I live to worship you I live I live to worship you if one more time to worship you I live to worship you I live to worship Let's cry out oh in his presence. Come on, oh. singing to worship you I live how about you is that your purpose is that your reason for life or is your reason to make a lot of money it's your reason to be famous but my reason is to worship him that's why I live my reason for existence is just to worship him oh my god and just think about that we worship him eternally that we will worship him once we go to heaven it will be eternal but you know what it doesn't stop it doesn't start there it starts right here it starts right here it can start for you it can start for you right here today why don't you just start right now why don't you start right now why don't you just get up on your feet right now why don't you just get up on your feet right now and start practicing? Get up on your feet. I need a little more on this mic so I don't have to strain. Just get up on your feet right now and start practicing the presence of the Lord. Start practicing what we're going to be doing eternally. You do it. You do it. Start practicing eternity right now. Start practicing eternal worship right now. God the Father, God the Son. Imagine yourself around the throne room. 
We used to sing a song I can only imagine. Imagine yourself in the presence of God right now. What would you be doing? Would you be looking around? Would you be thinking about other things? What would you be doing in the presence of the Lord? The angels are bowing, bowing before him, crying, holy, 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 holy. He's a holy God. You ought to be crying, holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, because he is. Because he was and because he is and will always be. Holy, holy, Lord. We worship you, Father. We worship you in the beauty of your holiness. We praise you, Lord. We thank you, God. Oh, God, I see the glass around the throne. I see the clearness. I can see the throne room of God right now. I see the colors coming from the floor. I see the different rainbow colors. I see the angels around the throne right now. I see Jesus sitting at the right hand. Oh, he's holy. He's holy. We're in his presence. We're on holy ground right now. Thank you, Father, for our visitation. Thank you, Lord, for pulling us into the throne room this morning. Thank you, God. Oh, I see him. God, I see you, Father. I see you, Jesus. Ooh, he's holy. Can we just sing that one time? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning. Let it rise up to him today. Just because he's holy. Holy, holy, holy. Merciful. Merciful and love. It's the Godhead. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, God. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Father. Hallelujah. It's not every time we get a chance and we have a visitation like that, we need to enter in. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. Hallelujah. He's so worthy. He's so faithful. He's so good. He's truth. He's true all the time. He's so compassionate. He's so merciful. He's so good to us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, I feel him troubling the waters this morning. Hallelujah. If you just step in, 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 whatever you brought with you will fall off. If you'll just step in, He's troubling the waters this morning. If you just step in. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Thank you, Father. Woo. God, I thank you. Oh, he's so holy. Oh, God.
That's why my heart is filled. That's why my heart is filled. That's why my heart is filled. That's why my heart is filled with praise. And Pastor Cheryl, you sung one of my favorite songs last week, that my soul loves Jesus. What about you? My soul loves Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes we just need that release. Sometimes we just need that spiritual release. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's now time that we acknowledge our first-time visitors. Woo. If you're visiting with us, just wave. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Do we have anyone worshiping, visiting with us today? Woo. Thank you, Jesus. That's why I praise him like I do. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. He's catching those tears. He catches those tears. They're in a bowl. And they be, they're in the throne room. He presents them those that bowl of tears, which is the prayers of the saints. It's present, presented in the heavens. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just need to release. Sometimes you just need to release. You just need to release. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we're glad to see everybody this morning. Thank you for being here today. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel his presence in this place. Do you feel his presence in this place? Hallelujah. The choir comes. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Thank you, Lord. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him. Praise our God who is God. He's the only true and living God and he deserves all of our praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For some people who don't understand when you come to church and you worship, and you get in the worship, and you see the crying and the tears and the jumping and the shouting, it's because you've had a weight all week. You had stuff on you all week. And then when you come to the house of God, and you get in his presence, and you start and you begin to worship, that weight is being released. The weight is taken off. And I don't know about you, but I just feel like jumping. So I just jump. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. And you got to learn how to just let it go. Forget about what you look like. Forget about the people all around you. And you praise God for yourself to let that weight go. Thank you, Jesus. So we just worshiping him today. Thank you, Lord. And I feel a yes in my spirit. I really wasn't ready to sing this song, delete this song. We hadn't done it in a long time. But just praising him and worshiping him. It just rise up in me, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your word, Lord. Yes to anything you say, Lord, I will obey, Lord. I owe you that. Glory. Come on.
on straight street. Then he gave me the strength to find he's done great things. Oh, he's done great things. Yes, he has. I say yes, yes, yes. Feet on straight trees, and it gave me the strength to fight. He's done great things, so many great things. He's done great things. Yes, he has. I say yes, yes, yes. Oh, I say yes. I say yes to my Lord. Oh, I say yeah, yeah, yes to my Lord. He's done great things. He's done great things. Yes, he has. He's done great things. I say yes. I say. On straight street, gave me the strength to fight. He's done great things, so many great things. He's done great things. I say yes, I say yes, yes, yes. He brought me out of darkness, brought me out of into the marvelous light. Placed my feet on straight street, gave me the strength to fight. Oh, he's done great things, so many great things. He's done great things. I say yes, I say yes. She's the Lord. Come on. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Everything that has breath praise the Lord. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My soul says yes. My soul says yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My soul says yes. My soul says yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My soul says yes. My soul says yes. Lord, 
Ooh, don't you feel him this morning? Don't you feel his presence this morning? Okay, let me say, I feel his presence this morning. I feel his presence. I've learned that, not that we invite him in, because he's already here, because he's an omnipresent God. I can't invite him in where he's already. And I know it's not good English, Carol, to end a sentence with that. <laughs> For you, for you teachers, I, I did learn that in, 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 in elementary school. But you can't invite him where he's already. He's already here. Amen. He's already here. The Bible says that he, he, he inhabits the praises of his people. It's just that he's here a little bit extra than this morning. Yeah, he's extra this morning. That's the kind of God that we serve. He's extra this morning. Not that you can invite him. He's already here. He's a, oh, he's a good God. He got a whole lot of names. I, I was thinking about when they were singing that song by, by uh, Fred Hammond, The Living Word. John saw him as, as the word made flesh walking among us. John say, in the beginning was the word. Don't you know that? He was saying, in the beginning was Jesus. And Jesus was the word. And the word was Jesus. And Jesus walked among us. Come on, somebody. And became flesh. Not that he, not that he, he, not that he was, but he was already what he was already. He was already what he was already was. He has always been the word of God. He, there is no beginning to him. There, there is no end. I wish I had somebody that loved Jesus like I love him. Like, like I adore him. He, oh, he's my everything. He's my everything. I woke up this morning and I was looking at the news. I, I looked at how is, Israel and, and, and Iran, they kind of in a battle right now. And how Iran sent all these missiles to Israel. They sent over 300 and something missiles to Israel. But, but the news media said that that Israel got help from America and Israel got help from Great Britain but it wasn't America that helped Israel it wasn't Great Britain that helped Israel it was the one that said I watch over Israel I neither slumber nor sleep the battle never belonged to Israel it has always sister Larry belonged to God and I ran go find out who God is God. They go find out that Israel still have the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh, you know, James was singing that, that word, that, that, that song that said, Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call him. We call him Jesus. But some people call him Ananias. Some people called him Jehovah. Some people call him Jehovah Rapha. Some people call him, come on now, Jehovah Sick Canoe. And oh, he'll fight your battle. He is a fighter. He, he's David's slingshot. He, he's Joshua's sun stopper. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I'm beginning to be like one of them old folk that I used to look at and wonder what they talking about. But as I'm on the other side of 60, I understand what they mean when they say I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I woke up thinking about how good he is, how precious he is. How anointing he is. What a protector he is, Sister Gentry. Sister Gentry, I woke up this morning. He dropped you in my spirit. How he heals your body. How he caused that cancer to be caught just in the nick of time where you didn't have to go through a whole lot. He's a good God. And that's why you ought to praise him this morning. You ought to praise him on credit. You ought to pray if you don't need nothing right now. You ought to pray 
praise Him anyway. The presence of the Lord is in this place. I just love Him. I just love Him. He, he walks with me, y'all. He, he talks with me. And He tells me I'm His own. Yeah, he tell, He'll tell you you belong to Him. That's why you can't leave him because you belong to him. That's why you can't walk away from him. No matter what happened to you, you belong to him. And he said, I'm a jealous God. Oh, God got that crazy kind of love. Don't get hooked up with him. Because if you get hooked up with him, he ain't going to let you go. He ain't going to let you go. He's not going to let you go. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for your presence. We give you total praise. Oh, God, you fought Israel battle while we were sleeping. The enemy was launching all kind of attacks on them. Look at you, Father. Over 300 missiles. And didn't nobody get injured. Didn't nobody get killed. You almighty God. They launched them so high in the sky. They got in your vicinity, dear God. You a protector. You a good God. You say that you never slumber nor do you sleep. You keep Israel. And if you can keep Israel, you can keep us too, dear Father. So, God, we thank you for your presence. Not that we invited you in. You were already here. This is your house. How can we welcome into something that belongs to you, Father? But we show all are glad that you are here, God. You are a good God. You bad all by yourself. The, Israel, the Israelites had a lot of names for you. And one of the names they had for you was terrible. You are terrible, God. There's no missile that can defeat you. There's no aircraft that can fly as fast as you. There's no bomb, no atomic bomb that can annihilate you, God. You are God and God alone. And we belong to you and you belong to us. And we thank you for it. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your son. But most of all, Father, we give you total praise in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give Bishop a hand clap as he comes. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. While the spirit of worship is in this house, will y'all sing, We have come into this house, gathered in his name to worship him. Our children are excused to go at this time. There's a spirit of worship here today. Can y'all sing a little bit of that for me? How many of you all came to worship today? How many worshipers do we have in the house? Yes. So just forget about yourself. Concentrate on him and worship. Come on, sing that again. Just forget about yourself. Concentrate on him and worship. Yes. Just forget about yourself. This time say just lift up holy hands. Concentrate on him and worship. Say it again. Just lift up holy hands. 
concentrate on him and worship. So just lift up holy hands. So just lift up holy hands. Concentrate and worship. Worship. This is why we worship him, because he is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. How many of you know he's Lord today? Is he the Lord of your life? If he's the Lord of your life, that means that he owns you. He owns you. He's your master. He's your ruler. He runs everything in your life. Yes. Every knee. Every time, now watch this because he's Lord, we exalt thee. Come on, y'all, let's exalt him today. We exalt, we exalt thee. Yes, we exalt. Come on, right there. Yes, we exalt. We exalt. Yes, we do, Lord. Yes, we do. We exalt. Now, Father, we bless you and we honor your presence. Thank you for being in our midst today. And we pray that every burden will be removed and that every yoke will be destroyed today. We pray, Father, that every manner of sickness and disease will be healed on today. We pray, Father God, that whatever has your people bound will be removed. We pray that the seed of your word would penetrate into the very depths of our hearts that that seed would germinate, that it would take root, spring forth and bear fruit in our lives, some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. We ask that you would give us wisdom, knowledge, insight, revelation, and understanding of your word. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would save those who are lost and heal those who are sick, deliver those who are bound and afflicted, and we pray that you would give increase in your kingdom and in this church. And we will always give you the praise, the honor, and all of the glory in Jesus' name. Can we say amen today? And can we give God a hand clap of praise? Glory to God. Glory to God. Now lift your Bibles with me. Amen. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I boldly proclaim that I am the head and not the tail. I'm above only and never beneath. I shall be the lender and not the borrower. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. It is a lamp unto my feet. It is a light unto my path. And because of your word, my life will never be the same. Amen. Galatians chapter number three. Galatians chapter number three. The blessing of Abraham will do part 12 on today. I want to thank all of you all who went with us on Wednesday night over to uh, Bishop Titus Church, the Grady Emanuel Family Worship Center. We had such a wonderful time 
in their faith explosion conference. And I truly appreciate y'all. I know it's a lot to ask people to come with you on a Wednesday night. And, um, but you know, I remember back in the days, we went Sunday night through Friday night conference. <laughs> and we didn't get out of church sometime until 9, 30, and 10 o'clock and stayed to about 12 and 1 some nights. And the Lord gave us strength uh, for the journey for the next day. Amen. We rest on Saturday. Be right back in church on Sunday. Ain't God good? Won't he do it? I know he will. Verse 13 and 14. Verses 13 and 14. And then we'll read verse 29 of this third chapter of Galatians. Um, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us. For it is written... Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Verse 29, and if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Another translation of that says, if you belong to Christ. And you have to make sure that you know that you belong to Christ. Romans chapter number 8. How do I belong to Christ? When I am born again, born into the family of God. Glory. I'm adopted by God. I'm a son of God. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, uh, verse 16 and 17 of Romans chapter number 8. And it says, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So the Holy Spirit will bear witness with your spirit. Now, if there's no witness bearing, no conviction, no confirmation in your spirit that you belong to God, then it's a good indication that you don't. And then it says, uh, and if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Indeed, if we suffer with him and that we may also be glorified together. Now, we've been talking about uh, this blessing of Abraham and we've been talking about, you know, being joint heirs with Christ and what all of that means. This is part four of that part. Uh, being joint heirs, we talked about citizenship in the kingdom on last week. We talked about enormous treasures in heaven, unsearchable riches of God. And we talked about the right to surround the throne of God. Uh, and, and talked about how we have positions as kings already. We are kings. And not only are we kings, but we are priests. And the, the whole point behind all of this teaching this is so that we can elevate our way of thinking and if we elevate our way of thinking we'll elevate the way that we see ourselves and we'll see ourselves as as the scripture says if we belong to Christ if we belong to Christ then we're you know heirs and we're joint heirs we're the seed of Abraham we're God's people and you have to see yourself as a child of God. You have to know that in your spirit. You can't be wishy-washy with that. You have to know. And, and if the spirit of God lives in you because you have been born again and baptized into Christ, then he will testify to you. He will confirm to you that you are a child of God. And if you know that you are a child of God, then you ought to be thinking that way. I belong to God. I'm, a, I'm his child. I've been begotten of God. I do not belong to the devil. I don't belong to the world. I belong to God. I'm in the kingdom of God. That's who I am. I'm not cursed because Jesus became a curse for me. Amen? Amen? I'm blessed, and I need to see myself that way. And when I talk about myself, 
I need to talk about myself. Some people may say, well, you're arrogant. No, I'm not. I'm just saying what God says about me. God says I'm blessed. And should I be saying otherwise just because you don't think I am? No. I'm going to say, as a matter of fact, everybody in here say I'm blessed. Say I'm a child of God. I'm a king and I'm a priest. Glory to God. Amen. That's who you are. You need to tell everybody that everywhere you go. Y'all go to eat after church. Say, man, do you realize that you're serving a king? <laughs> they may look at you like you're crazy, but don't you flinch. Not only am I a king, but I'm a priest. And don't get, don't, don't get scared or be offended. You know, if they say, you don't look like no king, don't make no difference what I look like. Amen. But they say, well, then leave me a kingly uh, tip. <laughs> well, then you serve me like I'm a king. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, y'all. All right. And here's the, next, here's the next thing, the position of glory that we have. Kings, priests, the positions of being kings, the positions of being priests, but also the positions of of glory. First Peter chapter number five. First Peter chapter five, the first four verses reads, the elders who are among you, I exhort. I who am a fellow elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God, which is among you serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, who do y'all believe the chief shepherd is? Jesus. When the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. The chief shepherd, as I said, is Jesus Christ. Verse number four refers to his second coming when he will judge all the people and give rewards to all his faithful followers. The crown, while metaphorical, pictures the eternal and unchanging glory believers will receive what better motivation for selfless service what better motivation for keeping the faith in the face of suffering and temptation one of the rewards that you and I will receive for faithfulness when we go to heaven is that he will crown us he will crown us you will receive a crown crown now <clears throat> when the olympic or or the the the, the roman um, greek and all those athletes ran and participated in the races that they did back in those days they participated in a a, a, a or they they uh, competed for a crown that faded away mm-hmm it faded away. It was a, a, a reef made out of perhaps, you know, vines or, or some kind of plant or something like that. But it faded away after a while. The crown that you and I will receive in heaven, that crown will never fade away. It is an eternal crown. It, it, it is a crown that is, you've seen these kingdoms here on earth and the kings who wear their crowns here on earth of pure gold and all of that and it looks beautiful and it looks very expensive and those crowns fail in comparison to what God is going to give you for faithful service can I and notice I said for faithful service that's pretty much going to be the theme in this as I finish this out today is faithful service when we have been faithful to the Lord. Now, now let's go on and look at the responsibility that we have as fellow heirs. Uh, 
fellow heirs by responsibility. Christ is the sovereign majesty of the universe. The one who is ordained to rule over and to rule and oversee all. Therefore, we shall we 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 share rather in the inheritance of his responsibility. So we will receive rulership over many things. Now people oftentimes wonder, you know, what what you know, what is it gonna be like when we get to heaven? What is it going to be like? Will we be like, you know, the pictures that, you know, you see Michelangelo have painted about little babies and all that kind of stuff or floating on clouds, you know, playing a harp and all. No, that's not what it's going to be like. All right. Are we going to be angels? No, we're not going to be angels. We're not going to have wings or anything like that. Um, Jesus said we will be like the angels for they neither marry nor do they give in marriage. So there won't be any weddings performed in heaven. You know, Pastor Cheryl and I will be there, but we're not going to be like we are now as husband and wife. Amen. Some of y'all say, ooh, then I don't want to go. Then somebody else may say, let me hurry up and go. <laughs> it's going to be so good that you ain't going to be thinking about being husband and wife. Can I get an amen? Because, see, the church, we will be the bride of Christ. He will be our husband. Now, this ain't no funny stuff, freaky, all that kind of stuff, because talk, I'm talking to the men now. I ain't going to be nobody's wife. <laughs> it ain't no freaky stuff, okay? It's symbolic. It's symbolic. And so, so let's look at this. The rulership over the many things is the first thing. Rulership over the many things. Matthew's gospel, chapter number 25 and verse number 23. Listen to what it says. It says, his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. That, that, that word faithful again. You have been faithful, that is again, over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Once again, you have been, what did he say first of all? Well done, good and faithful servant. For you have been faithful over a few things. I will make you the ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. When you read this parable in Matthew's gospel, the 25th chapter, the first two servants were commended for faithful service and rewarded by being made rulers over many things. We talked about a crown. Uh-huh. Second Timothy 4 and 8 talks about that also. Also thrones. Uh, not only will you have crowns, but you'll also have thrones. Revelation, the third chapter in the 21st verse. And not only that, but a kingdom. According to Matthew's gospel 25 and verse number 34. Are all, these are all held out to us as incentives to faithful service. Now listen to this. Because a lot of people go through this life. Go through this life. And life seems hard and it seems unfair and it seems like you're always overlooked it seems like you can't ever get what you've been believing God for it just seems like you know it's just a total waste of time sometimes to come to church to serve God to give tithe and offering and to do anything it just seems like but how many of y'all know God is watching all of that he knows the attitudes of our hearts and he knows the level of our faithfulness and our commitment to him. He's watching it all. Mm. He's watching it all. Now, now listen to this because this is very important. Don't be deceived. Well, let me back back just a minute because I don't want to get ahead of myself. What we gain in the church age, we will enjoy in the kingdom age. So don't be deceived into believing that if what your assignment may be, uh, that if it may be small or, you know, in comparison to other people's assignment, just make sure that you are faithful over what your assignment is. 
There may be people who may seem more gifted, more talented, have more abilities than you. And it seems like God is using them in a great and mighty way. Don't get it twisted. What God has given you, he intended for you to have. And he has intended for you to use it and be faithful while you're using it. Because see, when we get to glory, there are a lot of people who have seemed as though they received a lot on this side. You will be made rulers over them on the other side if you have been faithful over the small assignment that you think you have. How many of y'all understand it's, it's not the size. It's the faithfulness. It's the faithfulness. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so let's keep going here. There's no greater reward then to hear our Lord say, well done, good and faithful servant. Because if you have been faithful where you are, trust me, he has been observing and he will reward you. God, listen to this, according to Hebrews chapter number 6 and verse number 12. God is not unjust. I love this. He is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have done toward his name in that you minister to the saints and do minister. God is watching. God is watching. There's some folk, you know, they're going to get all their reward here on the earth. They're going to get their pats on the back. Oh, the people just going to say, oh, you blessed me so much. Oh, I just love the heat. And, and a lot of times people serve so that they can get that from people. They serve because they want the applause of men. They want, you know, the uh, uh, appreciation and the acceptance of men. But their hearts are not pure in what they're doing. They serve to be seen. But when you serve out of a pure heart, whether people ever applaud you or not, or people ever pat you on the back and say, great job. If they never call your name here on earth, God is writing it all down in heaven. Can I get an amen? God knows your labor of love. And God will reward you immensely in heaven. Hmm. Now let's keep going because here's the next thing uh, in our, uh, we're heirs by responsibility, the right to rule and to hold authority. The, the right to rule and to hold authority. Luke's gospel chapter number 12 verses 42 through 44. It says, and the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise servant? whom his master will make ruler over his household to give them their portion of food in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all that he has. That's Luke, uh -huh, Luke 22 and uh, 28 through uh, 29, that's a reference scripture that I want you to write down and go back and read that later on this week. And when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account for what we have done with what we've been given, our purpose, our calling, our gifts, talents, and abilities, whatever we have been faithful stewards over will determine what we will be assigned to rule over in the millennial kingdom. And no matter how great or small your assignment is, your talent or your gift, whatever it may be, just make sure that you are faithful. Make sure that you're faithful. 
be faithful in fulfilling God's purpose for your life. Make sure you're faithful in that. Had a, had a pastor share with us a few weeks ago in our prayer call every Tuesday night. A bunch of us pastors get together and church members and politicians. We'll be praying for state of Texas, our nation, a lot of different things that are going on every Tuesday night. And one of our pastors shared with us, you know, because he was, and I get this, you go through sometimes a, a, a period of discouragement. And the expectation on Resurrection Sunday morning is, you know, as pastor, you, you're praying and believing that God is going to fill the house up. It's going to be a full house on Resurrection because people come to church on Easter. Can you say amen? And listening to his conversation and thing that he was saying that it didn't happen like that. And many of his people called and said they, they, they didn't come because there was such a traffic back up on the main street that came down to where the church was because of this big mega church in the neighborhood the police officers had to direct the traffic to help people off the parking lot because they had come to the early service and then help other people get on to the parking lot. And it was so backed up that his people got discouraged and went on back home. And it was very discouraging to him. And he, he's, he's wondering, what am I doing wrong? Where did I miss it? I have labored in this church for years and and you know i expected greater things than this to happen on sunday and you know and so i wanted to share with him some things but you know so many other people weighed in on it and and encouraged it and i was very happy that they did and afterwards i text him a message to encourage him because oftentimes we think that being small means that you're not being successful. We think that being mega, being big, is equated with success. And that's not always true. Now, if you're in the house or if you're watching on the live stream and you cannot honestly say, Bishop Hines, I know I'm saved. I know beyond the shadow of a doubt if I die today, if I die tomorrow, I know I'm going to heaven to be with the Lord. Now, if you can't say that with confidence and assurance, then I want to give you an opportunity today to be saved and to know that you're saved. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 6 and 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 say that if you confess with your mouth 
that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and verse 9 say, For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. We're not saved because we're good. We're not saved because we get it right. We're saved because God loved us, sent Jesus to die for the sins of the whole world, and on the third day he raised him from the dead. And if you want to be saved, then I want to lead you in a word of prayer. I'm going to ask everyone, if you would, please, to bow your heads. If you want to be saved, just repeat this prayer. Just mean it with all of your heart, and God will save you from your sins. Dear God in heaven, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins, and I turn away from them. I turn my life to you. I believe that Jesus is your son. That he died for all of my sins and you raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus, I ask that you would come into my life and save me. Guide me, lead me, and teach me to live this saved life. Right now, I receive you by faith as my Savior and my Lord. And I thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I give my life to you. Now fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me to overflowing measures. Give me the ability to speak in other tongues and the power to bear witness of you. By faith, I receive the Holy Ghost. By faith, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. By faith, I have the tongues and I have the power. Thank you for filling me today. In Jesus' name, let the people of God say amen. 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 Now listen, if you said that prayer and you meant it with all of your heart, I want you to know God saved you from your sins. He filled you with his spirit and he's given you a brand new life in him, his very own life, eternal life. Here's the next thing you should do. If you're not already a member of a good Bible teaching church, I encourage you to find a good Bible teaching church. Unite with that church. Become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then out of your obedience to him, be baptized. And if you live in zip code number 77089, 77034, 77075, or 77581, you're close to New Covenant. We invite you to come to New Covenant and be a part of our church. We are a great Bible teaching church, and we'd love to have you as a member of our church family. Amen? Can we give God a hand clap? Amen. Thank y'all worship leaders. You all can be seated. We're going to get ready to uh, do the announcements. After we do the announcements, then we're going to bring the tithe and the offering, and then we'll be done. You can go to our website, nccchouston.com, uh, or you can scan the QR code on your screen, and it'll take you right to our website. And um, you can go to where it says Givelify, and you can give your tithe and your offering there. And um, we are going to do the announcements. You guys ready? Y'all ready? Let's do the announcements. Announcements, April 14, 2024. Pastoral anniversary. Bishop Bill Hines and Pastor Cheryl Hines will be celebrate, celebrated and honored for 29 years of faithful ministry to the body of Christ on Sunday, April 28th. Services will start at 3 p.m. and our guest speaker will be Apostle Jean A. Moore of St. Agnes March of Faith Ministries. Please be sure to attend this joyous occasion. Also, each working adult member is asked to sow a seed of $125. For more information, you may contact Brother Chris and Monica Spears. Thank you. Financial Workshop. New Covenant will be hosting a financial workshop Friday evening, May 3rd at 7 p.m., where the guest speaker is Eugene Curtis, Jr. of Primerica Financial Services. For more information, please contact Sister Kia Gabriel at 832-541-0249. Vacation Bible School. All parents, boys and girls, it's that time of the year again. 
Vacation Bible School. Vacation Bible School will be held the week of June 10th through June 14th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. night. See Minister Alicia Howard for more de detail. The Food Pantry Ministry. The Food Pantry Ministry would like to give you the opportunity to work side by side in the fight against food insecurity. Will you join this ministry team only one Saturday of each month? You can select to serve the community on either the second or fourth Saturday of the month. Also, the Food Pantry Ministry is seeking those who are available to volunteer on the first and third Wednesday of each month for one hour to pre bag No heavy lifting involved. Please contact Minister J Janice Gentry, Brother Edward Larry, or Minister Dana Woods for more details. Sunday School. Join, join us for Sunday School every Sunday from 8 to 8.45 a.m. Please reach out to Brother Danny Andrus, Minister Janet Gentry, or Minister Alicia Howard for additional information. Young Adults in High School Ministries. Young Adults, please join us immediately following the worship service as we will have Sunday School in the daycare briefly for 30 minutes. Please contact Sister Randy Askew at 832-216-9407 for more information on how to get involved and stay connected. These have been your announcements on behalf of New Covenant Christian Church. Test. All right, we don't have the results from yesterday's winners. That, those are the results. Amen. Y'all know we had such a wonderful time on yesterday uh, with the Spring Festival. Amen. Can we give all of our volunteers a hand? Man, I tell you, we had a wonderful, wonderful time once again. And uh, in the desserts, children's desserts category, uh, third place winners, there were two of them, Canavis Eglin Jr. and Jace Alexandra. Amen. Second place. Trinity Martin and Javari Nelson, and then Mila Johnson. Am I saying that right? Is it Mila or Myla? Is it Mila? Well, all right. Well, she won. Amen. She got first place. Uh, the adult dessert category, third place went to Sister Beverly Phelps. It's, all right. Second place, we had uh, Sister Betty Beasley in second place. And we had a tie for first place with Sister Sante Bernardo and Pastor Cheryl Hines. Amen. She took that prize money and went on vacation. Amen. I'm just playing. <laughs> All right. Desserts pies. That was desserts cakes. But this is dessert pies. Third place went to Angelina Gooden. All right. Second place, Pam Hopkins. Third, I mean, first place, uh, Angie Bimich. Amen. All right. Sister Bimich. In a national category, we only had two in that category. Second place went to Nikki McKibben. And first place went to Asante Bernardo. All right. Uh, for the meats department, third place, Sherman Francis. Second place, Janice Gentry. First place, Sister Dorothy Hopkins. All right. In the poultry Category Second place went to Stephen Bimich. And first place went to Catherine Jackson. All right. In the seafood category, there was only one entry in that. Ray Singleton won that. Amen. Smoked Cajun catfish. Florida God. All right. In the veggies, salads, and sides, second place went to... Uh, Mason and Dylan Roberson. All right. Roberson. Amen. First place, that was a try uh, between Vashita Eglin, Vashita Eglin, I'm sorry, and Jenna uh, Harris, Virginia Harris. Amen. Glory to God. I'm so used to calling her Jenna, y'all, but her name, Virginia. Amen. Barbecue ribs. Well, no, let, let, let me go up. Cajun food. I'm sorry. Third place. Minister Janice Gentry. Second place, Montrant Grace. 
And first place, Katherine Jackson. Barbecue ribs. All right, now I didn't enter my ribs, you know. I ain't into my ribs. I just want everybody to eat them. Third place, Canavis Eglin. Second place, Stephen Bimage. And first place, Alan Robertson. Amen. And here's the last one, everybody. Barbecue brisket. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, I knew we were going to hear that. Third place, Alan Robertson. Second place, <laughs> Stephen Bimage. Amen. And guess who won first place for their brisket? Barbecue brisket. The one and only. Come on, Cold somebody. Pastor. Come on. Cold the one and only. Cold Pastor. <laughs> you know Cold Pastor ain't barbecue that brisket, man. <laughs> yeah, I can't tell y'all my secret. All right. What kind of giver does God love? Well, then let's show some cheer up in here, everybody. Yes. Lift your tithe and your offering and repeat after me. Father, I thank you for supplying me with seed to sow. And I thank you for making all grace abound toward me. So in all things, at all times, I have everything I need. Father, I thank you because I'm a cheerful giver. I will reap generously. Father, I thank you. Because you supply and increase my seed. And according to your word, I will be made rich in every way. Thank you for blessing my seed. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we get everyone to stand, please? Face the center aisle and follow the ushers from the rear. Amen. Good to see Dad Gabriel back in the house today. Amen. Glory to God after surgery. All right. Listen, we're going to get ready to dismiss. Remember, once we dismiss, let's head on out because we got people that are going to be in line to get food. Okay? So let's pray. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for such an awesome and wor wonderful time of worship on today. And we want to lift up our children, Lord God, who will be testing the star tests on this week. We pray that you would bless them, keep their little minds, bring all things back to their remembrance. And we pray that all of them would be successful in their endeavors. Now, Father, we thank you and we praise you as we prepare to leave this place and go to our various destinations. We ask that you would grant us safety upon our arrival and we'll give you all the glory, all the honor, and all of the praise in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. May God's blessings be upon you. You are dismissed.